In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was, was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moves upon the face of the water. Mm-hmm. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. Seven verse, And God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and, and it was so. Eleven verse, And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass and herbs yielding seed, and the fruit trees yielding fruit after his kind. 21st verse, And God created the great whales, and every living creature that moveth, which, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind, and God saw that it was good. 26 through the 27 verse, and God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowls of the earth, of the, of the air, and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And God created man in his image. In the image of God created he them. Male and female created he them. Amen? Amen. God first. Amen. I'm going to ask our officers if you would prepare yourselves at this time for the ministry of giving. Will you bow your head? Eternal Father, we thank you now, even as we come in the ministry of giving. Lord, we realize that all good and all perfect gifts come from above. And God, even now as we come, as we come to honor you and bless you in our giving, we ask you would take our little. Lord, if you can take two fish and a little bread and feed a multitude, what is our little to you? God, you would bless us according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Bless every tithe, bless every sower, bless every giver. God, we honor you in our giving today. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to ask our officers if you would come. You may come at this time. I'm going to ask if you would stand in the overflow on both sides. And you can stand and from the front. You may go out and come to Brother Tim, and then you can come back. Amen? Go to the side and then come back at the middle. Turn to the wall. Turn to the wall. To the wall. Yes, come back. Thank you.
different, and I'm going to turn this over into the hands of the praise and worship team. But I want you to, I want you, I want you to understand what you just did. You didn't just give to anybody. You obey God because He said, "Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that it will be meat in my house." And look what He said. He said, "Prove me." And see if I would not open a window in heaven and pour you. Come on, you ain't celebrating right now.
said we would use me, Lord. Glory be to God. 
one of the things I believe that have happened to the body of Christ, especially Pentecostal peoples, we have become shame of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We become ashamed because our little pretty, handsome, beautiful little baby that sit on our knee done grow up and commit sin. They're making us ashamed by the way they live, but they are nothing no more than sinners. Glory be to God. And we get ashamed many times from our own home and our surroundings. But if my grandson, until they get saved, you probably know some things that they have done that I'm suspecting they've done because I don't drink with them. But I know they drink. I know they run in the street. I know they go into the honky tone. But Sister Morgan and I have come to the conclusion with our grandchildren and yours that we can encourage you to same God that saved me is able to save them. And I rejoice because he's given me a promise now that I know that I didn't know before I got saved. He said, I'll save you and your children. and teaching about how all-powerful he is. And just because he allows to do some things, as I did, he's waiting for the perfect time. And he would do it sooner if many of us would stop trying to do it ourselves. Because God will do many things through us, but he will not allow to do things for him to be exalted above him. He will let us exalt all of the strength and the ability we have, and then he'll save who we're trying to save. Oh, my God, hallelujah. And I just love you. I enjoy coming to you face-to-face like I am now, just getting up to exalt the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have learned that when I thought I had to go up into the mountains to get a message, all I had to do was go down in the valley. Because he's a God everywhere. everywhere. Glory be to God. Amen. And he loves us. But one of the things that Pentecostal, Holy Ghost, fear people and holiness, per se, that have been the people that came out to be separated, to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And what we came out from was religion, uh denomination and all of those things, but it did not make us better than those. Somewhere Pentecostal churches of God in Christ, baptism, Holy Ghost, be a people, are beginning to give way to organizationism instead of holiness. We are trained in holiness because we have been so organizationalized until we have obtained stuff, wealth, and all of that, until we have walked away from holiness. There were a time as we was Pentecostal, sanctified, saved. We didn't have the things and the stuff we have now, but we had some things and stuff. But what we had was holiness. Glory be. We was not ashamed to praise the Lord. We were not ashamed to come to church in a car that we thought would break down on the way to church. We were not ashamed to acknowledge that God is my source. Glory be to God. And as we serve the Lord in the beauty of holiness with a little, a little of nothing, not much of anything, we... Lived in the scripture where as your soul prospers, so shall ye. As our soul was prospering and clapping our hands, being talked about, being called holy rollers, being called them on sanctified people, our soul was regular prospering. And as our soul was prospering, God began to add things to us. Some of you don't even know where your wardrobe comes from. Some of you don't even know how all those 
those shoes end up in your closet. Some of you don't know how all of the things and automobiles that you have, you really don't know how they got you got them. But you got them because your soul was right. You was more intent to go to heaven than you would enjoy the pleasure of this world. And as we achieve these things that God gave us to enjoy, somebody say enjoy. He gave us these things that we may enjoy and not worship. Glory be to God. And because he has given us an abundantness and sanctified Pentecost, Holy Ghost, dear people, ought to be grateful that God gives us abundantness. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. And he has given us all of these things in abundantness to show forth his glory, to let the down try to know that if God did it for me, he'll do it for you. But many of us now got the things to enjoy, and we're saying now, my soul don't need to prosper. We're almost saying, and I know I'm biblically talking. You may not know a scripture written. But biblically talking, the rich man decided that I am going to live a lavish, abundant life. I'm going to tear down barns and be a bigger barn. And I'm going to put stuff in my barn, and I'm going to say, so relax. I'm encouraging the saints here today. We don't need to let our soul relax. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We don't need to start chasing stuff and things and let our soul relax. Glory be to God. And the rich man built bonds and built bigger bonds and stored up all of his good. My God. That he forgot about the story of Job. Naked I come in this world and naked I go out. He forgot about the story that you cannot care nothing with you. But yet he wanted to live a lavish life and build a bond. And then he said, my soul shall rejoice and make merry. Glory. Saints, I'm encouraging us for the next few minutes. Don't get comfortable with your soul. Glory be to God. What shall a man, I know I'm talking biblically, as I encourage you, and you may not think it's scripture. What will a man gain? The whole world he may gain, and riches untold, and lose his soul. Thanks, I want to encourage you. It ain't worth it to lose your soul. Ain't nothing worth it to lose your soul. Many people have lost their home in bankruptcy. Many people have lost their home, their automobile, because they couldn't make the payment. But they got another one. You can get another chance with bad credit. Glory be there. It may cost you more. You can get another car with bad credit. The interest rate may be higher. Glory. There's the consequences that come with bad things or bad credit or a bad life. Doesn't mean you can't get saved. You can't be renewed. You cannot be reconciled. But there's bad things happen when we do bad things. Glory be to God. And so... We can get all of these things again, but if one lose their soul, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Once you lose your soul that does not belong to you, all souls belong to God. It's just a soul that sin it shall die. And this death, if you lose your soul from spending eternity with God, you still going to live, your soul's going to live, but it'll be away from God. Right. Don't talk about it much like you used to, but hell is real. Amen. It doesn't matter who don't talk about it, who don't preach it, and we done got so beyond now, especially Pentecostal people. We used to preach hell until saints was almost afraid to sin, so we didn't want to go to hell. But it's very little now said about hell. Prosperity, yes. Money coming, yes. You're going to be rich, yes. You're going to be wealthy, yes. But very little is talked about our soul spending eternity with God or in hell. It is being said, don't talk that. Don't preach that. My God.
God. Because they have done other things everywhere. But this is the way we do it here. All right. We still preach against sin. Yeah. We still preach Jesus, but we preach against sin. Glory to God. Sin brings a ruin. The devil cannot and he does not have the authority and the power as Mother was talking this morning. Being supremacy, being all God, all powerful. So the devil does not have the power nor the authority to cause a marriage that was joined together in holy matrimony to bring God glory to tear it up. I want to say that again. The devil does not have enough power to tear up, cause a marriage to end up in divorce. It is sin that causes it. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. A husband will never, 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 as a man, a husband, have a broken marriage with his wife if he don't commit adultery. And a young lady or a young man will never pregnant a young lady, and a young lady will never get pregnant if they don't fornicate. I know they don't preach it over yonder, but this is what we preach here. I'm not over yonder. I'm here. I'm right where God has planted me. It's to lift up my voice like a trumpet and show his people their transgression. Not sinners. Not those that still drink and party. Show their transgressors where you're wrong. I am mostly preaching to people that know better. That have had a sweet walk with the Lord, that had a beautiful dance, had a wonderful, powerful testimony, but then drifted into organizationism. We drift away from organism to organizationism. Organizationism is you do what you want to do, when you want to do it, how you want to do it, just don't break the law. You can drive 100 miles an hour. Glory be to God. And what the law calls, don't break the law until you get caught. But organism says if you break the law that of the land and the speed limit is 55, you drive 100, you already done broke the law. Though so you hadn't been caught, but you broke the law. Glory be to God. So transgressors is saying, I know this is right, but I'll do it my way. Transgressors is one that know God's way and say, I'll do it my way. But what will it profit a man to gain the whole? Look, we can be blessed continuously. We can continue to prosper. We can continue to have much. But in the responsibility of having much, be it houses, land, money, car, whatever much is, much is required. It does, it, 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 it deeply Amaze me to see people want to hit the lottery and then do good. Would we'll bless somebody. You want to bless people when you ain't got much. When the Lord says bless someone, you're supposed to bless. Oh, I'm gonna pay. I'm gonna get in church all this money when I get rich. But if you're not giving him ten percent out of your dollar now, you're not gonna give him two hundred thousand out of a quarter of a million. Just talking, just encouraging us. So when much is given, much is God has given us a whole lot. Glory, not just having the Holy Ghost, but He's given us His love. Glory be to So much is required from you when you say you got the love of God. You're supposed to love everybody. Somebody shout everybody. You're supposed to love everybody. You just can't love me, mine, and my few. You can't love those that love you because even sinners do that. You can't do good to those that you want to do good to you. Even sinners do that. I know they do it because I was once out there. Oh, my God. If COVID had been around, like tuberculosis or TB and those things back then, we would have been the same way in the world. We drank out of the same bottle, and we didn't wipe it off. Pass the ball from one to another one. Glory, y'all ain't helping me. But the saints have become so sophisticated. 
be to God. Hallelujah. So COVID is in the air. We go everywhere else. Why can't we come to church and trust God? It ain't going to be long before the take, the, the, the temperature, everything going to be done away with. God ain't waiting on the government to tell us when to come back together. He's waiting on us to come back together. We can still sit tight with one another and keep our masks on. Amen. But we we got to make sure we're not shining one another. Amen. Oh, y'all ain't happy me. Amen. We got to make sure, and I'm not telling you to tempt God, but there's going to come a time that we're going to have to pull the mask off. Not this one, but we're going to have to pull the mask off and people are going to see us for who we are. Amen. They're going to see us on our job. They're going to visit us in our house of prayer. They're going to begin to know you with Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. They're going to begin to know Bishop Morgan don't preach uh, uh, to, to enjoy sin. Bishop Morgan preached to love everybody. They're going to find you out for real. Glory be to God. And they're going to ask themselves the question, is that the same person I saw shouting in church in Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, and they're acting so mean on the job? Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We need to have the spirit of hospitality. And you cannot buy it. You cannot get it on your own. The gift of hospitality is like the gift of the Holy Ghost. It comes from God. Hallelujah. And some people have it. Some people want it. And some people got it. But they're cowards. Glory be to God. It is, it is, it is nowhere in the scripture that preachers, saints are supposed to be cowards. We're supposed to be bold. Somebody said bold. In the Lord. We don't use the gospel and holiness to tell people off. We use the gospel and the preaching to tell people of God. Hallelujah. Some people can't wait till they get saved so they can tell people off. Glory be to God. But we're supposed to tell people of God. Amen. Hallelujah. And as I close, oh, we're so thankful for Facebook Live family, conference call. And as I got up, as I began to look, just look all over the congregation here at Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. For nearly three years, to the saints of God of this house of prayer, we didn't even come to the house of prayer. We had service on Sunday morning at our homes, conference call, Wednesday night at our homes, conference call. But we were lifting up Jesus, glory. And it's a shame that we who've been lifting up Jesus are not around and not here to see God drawing others. I look over this congregation, I see faces. I'm never going to embarrass you. I will not call you out. But I see faces. I see people that I haven't seen here. So it has got to be God through us lifting his name of drawing people. Glory be to God. And drawing them into a place, not only are we lifting up God, but we can love you and you feel it. Glory be to God. Let me tell you something. People don't need the Holy Ghost to feel when they're being dogged out. When they're being talked down. When they're being looked down on. Look, clothes don't make us saved. Glory be. It is the inward man that where the real beauty is hidden. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And we are so thankful for this ministry and you fellowshipping with us and you taking time out to be with us. We pray and hope that God will have already spoken to you. I told Sister Morgan I am going to do my very level best as we did when our daughters and some of the saints children now, Kiva, just to name a few, Yolanda and and uh, the young people's sister Val and those that could have gone to Georgia, Florida, other states and made much more money than they made several years ago in 20, 25 years ago. But because the standard that we remain 
and we talk. We live before them, treated them with love. They gave up less money to be in practice of Montgomery Selma just to stay a part of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost ministry. That's a blessing, y'all. That's a blessing. And as we live and as we teach, as we preach, Morgan, Kayla, young Coleman's son, and uh, Jayla, and many other young people that are in college, like you were once, Sarah, Lisa once were, Tammy once were, just because she's my, they are my daughters, they don't have to stay here, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Just because they are my granddaughter, my daughters and granddaughter, they don't have to come to this church. Because they came to this church until they decided to make a commitment to join it. Glory. So we got children, young people coming to the church. We got parents' children coming to the church, but they've never decided, I want to be a member of Father, Son, Holy Ghost Church. Glory be. You can't be born in it. You can't join in it. You got to be born in it. Glory be to God. But I believe with all of my heart that Morgan, Jalen, that other college student that I just called, they are going to get an education. They're going to get an opportunity to go places, make much money, but until they make a decision to move back to Prattville, they're going to keep sending tithes. So we don't have to beg for tithes. Glory be to God. Because if we teach you the way of the Lord, glory be to God. You know what belongs to God, you know what comes from God, and you know what you're supposed to give to God. Yeah. So we're grateful. We're not beating you down. We don't do that here. We don't beat people down. Glory be to God. Hey, but three things we beat down, our flesh, the devil, and sin. Amen. And if we start beating down ourselves first, it'll be easy to beat down the devil. Uh, and it'll be easy to beat down sin. Amen. And it will never allow us to beat down people. I want to read for you, and I'm closing. We're going to be down to Pastor Chappelle at 1 o'clock to preach the service there. And I ask to solicit your prayers. I solicit your prayers and thank you for supporting us with Mother uh, Sanders on yesterday, funeralizing her son. And we want to appreciate you for praying for the fellowship of pastors and churches. Bishop David Lewis is in India, and he's ministering to people there, part of a mission team that we support in India. And then to see, maybe you had an opportunity. He always sent snippets and clips and messages of what's going on in the mission field that he goes to. I was just grateful on yesterday, I had the privilege to see the clip where they're in India, in the house of prayer, Indian, Hindus, glory, that used to worship fish and worship our God. But when the gospel fear your heart, you worship the true and living God. I don't care what language song you mean. And to see them preaching and talking about in the name of Jesus. To see them sitting on the floor and playing tanger- tambourine and playing the drums on the floor. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And here we got cushion seats. Here we, here we got uh, a platform. Here we got musical instruments. And here we sit on nice comfortable, soft pews. Should we have to be begged to pray to God? And I'm encouraging us. People that we have doomed and thought would never make it in, some of them might beat us there. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So I'm encouraging us. Let us lift Jesus up. That sinners would come running. What must I believe it's gonna happen here, Father Son Holy Ghost? It could be happening on a day like today. What must
must I do to be saved? They may not be talking to you, but they're talking to God. Somebody could be here today and say, I've heard about that Father, Son, Holy Ghost Church. I've heard about the preaching there. I've heard them talking about God. And just before I commit suicide, I'm going to try, Father, all that mercy. I'm going to try, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost Church. I'm going there. Glory be to God. And if I don't hear something to move me to change my heart, I'm giving up. You don't know who on the verge of suicide. I don't know who on the verge of whatever on Facebook Live. They may not see it until next week, next month. But the same word I'm sending you, I'm sending to them. They may pull that up on YouTube or Facebook, ready to commit suicide. And hear a voice like we're saying now, God love you. Glory be to God. And they hear the hand clap of the saints. They hear the excitement when we mention Jesus loves you. They, they hear the roar of the hand clap. I'm not trying to beg you to clap for me. I'm trying to encourage you if you've got Jesus in you, you ought to lift your hand, all ye people. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, Pentecostal people are the ones on the most part of becoming to be shamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. My God, nobody had to tell us in our early Pentecostal years, baby, to praise God. Hallelujah. The bishop would be preaching and talking, and all of a sudden, the Spirit of the Holy Ghost would hit one over there. Amen. Hit one over there. And next thing you know, the whole church shout. And that, that's where we get that, that reputation from. Y'all putting on because all y'all do the same. We're supposed to do the same thing. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. we pick up a song. This will be singing a song. And that one will start the song. That one, like Minister Lansing, start singing a song. And Brother Honest caught it and took it higher. And Mr. Lansing, I ain't quite through per se. He closed it out. And, and that's what, when, when the spirit get on one and get on another one. We almost got the best. The Holy Ghost, don't leave us until you touch everyone. Don't leave until when we walk away from this place. Everyone can say, surely God was in that place. Hallelujah. I want to close again in this scripture in a minute. Three people, sanctified people, Pentecostal people, I'm not talking about no offertorial person. Glory be to God. Because before I was a bishop and a pastor and a preacher, I was filled with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost don't supposed to cease because I get a high tower. The Spirit of the Lord don't supposed to leave me because I become bishop. The same Spirit in me when I was a, a believer filled with the Holy Ghost supposed to be in me now. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I can just feel his presence when I'm up. I can feel his presence. I can sense his presence. Glory be to God. And we ask you to continue to pray for it. I'll be making some announcements later on concerning Congress and what we have done. You should, you will be amazed who's supporting Congress besides you. I want to thank God for Brother Brandon always supporting this ministry him and his children coming up. <laughs> Not only do he come up, uh, I, I don't have to look at the book. The deacon know, and I'm sure they would thank people at their own appointed time and encourage people to give. We know what we're supposed to do, but let me tell you, it is good to be encouraged to do it. Without encouragement, the enemy and flesh will make us feel like I'm unappreciated. So we encourage one another. Brother Brandon Cerner is a supporter of this ministry and we thank everyone we thank all of you for giving and supporting this ministry through your tithes and offerings uh, St. John John chapter 3 I'm just going to read it I've already preached it and we're going to read John 
text of this message as I encourage before I read it. If any of you are here, like Nicodemus, he was questioning Jesus. He had questions. He had questions. But for every question you have, Jesus has the answer. He don't mind you asking questions. And we ask questions because we don't have the answer. But Jesus has the answer. So he answered Nicodemus' question in the 16th verse. For God so loved the world. And when God talks about world, he's not talking about the world that he created in existence that he's going to burn with fire. I want to say that again. God created the heaven and the earth. He called trees to be trees, water to be water, fish to be everything in the earth he created in the world. And he looked and said, it is good. He's not talking about that word because it's going to be done away with. It won't be a stone left on another, a building left on another. Everything's going to be burned to ashes. But when he's talking about the world here, remember Nicodemus had a question. He's talking about people. Glory be to God. He's talking about people when he's talking about nations. The nation of Islam, the nation of this particular nation, is not the country of the nation, it's people. Can I get someone to say people? God loved people so much that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. To all of you that believe in him and got eternal life, to all of you that haven't believed in him, he's for you, and to all of those that got God, try to hold on to him. But don't ever forget, he loved all of us. In spite of us. And I want you to know, elders, he loves you. Young people, he loves you. He loved us before we loved ourselves. Glory be to God. He loved us before he loved ourselves. None of us is here by chance, by accident. We was talking, and we'll get to that further, but this is with what we're saying. He predestined all of us. Uncle Bob, he knew you would be here when you was in Rhode Island. You was uh, doing the job. You was a, you, you was just a great man then. But God knew you would be here, not because of me, not because you got family here. God knew you was here because He planned it. Glory be to God. Some of you are messing up God's plan, so you think, but you cannot overthrow the plan of God. Brother Brandon, Brandon, he knew you would be here from self. He knew you would bring your boys here. He planned it. Glory be to God. And all of us, he planned for us to be here. So who am I to unplan what God planned? And he's going to save you. He's going to forgive you because you've got to know he loves you. It is Pentecostal people that have drifted away from the presence of God to make people think God only loves us. I said us. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, I'm talking to us. You can't get to a place because you prosper and got stuff and things and you got all of this and thank God don't love nobody else. When the scripture begs the difference. Whether you praise him or don't praise him, he still loves you. That's why I come to the conclusion, it is not my responsibility to make people praise God, to make people love God, to make people love one another, to make people do right. My responsibility is to tell you God loves you. And if you ever love him back, that's what the problem is. He loves us, but we haven't learned to love him back. You know, after 57 years, Brother Joe, I want you to come and sing. I asked Brother Joe a few Sundays ago, I said, I want you to sing. And he said, 
give me a little time. Give me a little time. And uh, we agreed for a little time. And the spirit in us knew that time is now. <laughs> Look, allow people to use their talents. That don't mean they're going to heaven. That don't mean they're going to hell. But it is God who gives us talent. And thanks be to God, the talent that he has, he's not like the one man that thought he was a hard master. He went and buried it. Thank God that the talent that I see in us, you may not be powerful knowing it, but the talent, use it, don't bury it. Because if you bury it, God will get it from you and give it to the one that done the most. I, I think that's why Sister Morgan and I are growing so in the Lord. He has taken some of your strength off you and given it to me. Glory be hallelujah. And that, that's why some of you can't get up and dance like you go. I got your strength. Glory. You have buried it. Y'all better hear me up in here. You won't pray. You won't lift your hand. God has given me healing strength. My apparatus don't bother me. My knees don't bother me like they do. He's giving me the strength on somebody needs. Better learn to use. Take it from you and give it to them. I, want, I looked at my wife this morning going forth. That's the mother of the church teaching Sunday school. I looked at her. I said, God, you strengthen her. I mean, it, when you get in your 70s like we are, 77 and, and 76, 75, and, and, and people uh, got their sound mind, and then I see 20 and 30 year old people losing their mind. But you can't be in your right mind if you won't praise God. You can't be in your right mind if you won't thank God. And I thank God that the age that I'm, we are at, we're not crabby old people. You, you, you can have crabby people in Pentecostal. You can have crabby old people in Pentecostal. But thanks be to God, He's sharpened our minds. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So we thought we'd do that. Brother Joe, thank God if you're here while he's singing this song, and I've given you what I feel led that God gave me to encourage and inspire the saints to do right. Quiet. Help him out. You know what he'll probably come with. You know what I like. See, when you know what people like, you both, and you're a servant, you both to serve them what they like. Come on, say amen. amen. I've, I've learned over the years, i got to be quick, I've learned over the years when Sister Morgan, uh, when we got married, my mother dear, she would allow us to tell her what we wanted to eat. And I could eat rice in every meal. I could eat rice and butter, rice and gravy, rice with chicken. I just enjoy eating rice. And I enjoy my dear biscuit. So when we got married, I told Sister Morgan to fix this and fix this, and, and your biscuit ain't quite like my dear biscuit. And she listened to all of that, Brother Joe. And she said, well, if you want my dear biscuit, you need to go let them cook. <laughs> but she learned over the years because of what I like. She learned to make biscuit near almost as good as my dear. So we thank you. We thank you. So when you, God give us servants' hearts to serve those that he loves, and he loves those that he gives servant hearts to be a blessing one to another. Glory be to God. And we have been called to serve people, to love people. It shouldn't be a Pentecostal, saved, sanctified person in here. It shouldn't be a member of this church in here. It shouldn't be a visitor that visits here more than one time to know that you know that you know you know that we're supposed to love one another. God bless you, sister, that we love one another. Indeed, we ain't seen nothing yet. God going to fill his house. COVID tried, but it didn't stop it. God prophesied that he's going to fill the house. But not only with his glory, he's going to fill the house with people. 
just been the occasion. God been good to you. God been good to you. I just can't hold it. Regardless of where you at, along with the message in this song, we're just the messengers bringing your message that God has been good to you. If you're unashamed, unapologetic, I want you to shout it out. God is good to me. Joe, get ready for the part one song, the first one. You remember that one? War. We're getting ready for war. Let me know when you're ready. Glory be to God. Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for your peace and your joy. If America can shoot down a balloon, supposedly be spying on America from China. Surely, we can shoot down sin that's fine on Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Devil, we're going to shoot you down. Sickness, we're going to shoot you down. Cancer, we're going to shoot you down. In the name of Jesus, you must come down. Go with us as we leave this service. Bless those that came that they want to come again. In Jesus' name, thank God and amen. God bless you. Join us on Wednesday night. Conference call next Sunday, Facebook Live. We love all of you. Drive safely. Be weather-minded. In Jesus' name, amen.